Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponderon Weather. In this update, we've got a multi-day severe weather outbreak with all three modes on the table, including damaging winds, large hail, and tornadoes. In fact, numerous winter weather advisories and even blizzard warnings are in place, as well as some wildfire dangers. It's gonna be really busy over the next couple of days. So let's really break this down and kind of delve into it. Here's the overall hazard map for this morning for your Monday, April the 11th. Man, we look at this pretty strong cold front for April standards and all these areas in purple here are your winter weather advisories and all the areas in pink are your winter storm warnings. In fact, they even have blizzard warnings happening right now are gonna be starting on Tuesday into North Dakota. but in, in portions of Portland Airport today, they actually had their first measurable snowfall since records began, since they actually been tracking since 1940. So huh, that is an impressive shot of cold air and it's got a lot of snow in its wake as well. So that's gonna be a lot of snow continuing to fly along the Pacific Northwest. That extends all the way down into the Sierra Nevada, getting back into Salt Lake City extending into the Rockies here, going into Montana with all the blizzard blizzard warnings happening to the Dakotas. They're expecting one to two feet of snow, guys. <laughs> and that extends even into portions of Minnesota here. But out ahead of it, you got the warm sector. And we do have an upgraded and enhanced risk for severe weather today into portions of Arkansas with the slight risk for severe weather extends all the way down into central Texas, going all the way up into uh, western uh, Tennessee. But here's the overall setup for today. So you can definitely see we got a lot of heavy snow to contend with into the Intermountain West regions. But out ahead of it, we got a critical fire danger where it's just going to be bone dry into portions of uh, New Mexico, getting into portions of uh, eastern Colorado here. But all the heavier snow should be along the coast. And then get, especially as we get into the Intermountain West heading towards Montana, that'll extend into the Dakotas. But there's right ahead of, of this uh, strong cold front. We do have that warm sector going to be in place uh, with that upper to mid-level trough with the with the disturbance is going to be swinging in from the southwest that's going to be kicking off some stronger thunderstorms as we get into the afternoon and these will be turning severe as we get into late afternoon into the evening time frame so let's highlight the rotation in the atmosphere because we do have a dry line in place and if the cap is able to break it's going to be breaking out and it's going to be rotating so you still have a slight risk for an isolated tornado threat extending all the way down in the, into uh, Dallas-Fort Worth, extended into portions of central Texas here. But I do feel the, uh, the most numerous or the better opportunity to see a, a tornado today or have the potential is right along here into uh, Arkansas where they do have going to be ha having an outflow boundary kick out ahead of this cold front, kind of the triple point out here. That's going to be having a lot more shear to contend with as well. And we should be able to uh, have some tornado potentials to definitely be on high alert. In fact, uh, the Storm Prediction Center has already highlighted and enhanced and upgraded to a 10% probability in places into Jonesboro, Arkansas, Conway, getting into Jacksonville, into Russellville, as a, into Cabot, Arkansas. So those areas are going to be on high alert for a possible tornado spin up today. And then extending all the way into Memphis, Tennessee, Little Rock, getting into Fort Smith, Arkansas, all the way into Little Rock, Arkansas. And then you can't roll out an isolated uh, tornado threat as well if the cap is able to break and extending all the way down into the Dallas Fort Worth area, but extends all the way into uh, western parts of uh, Kentucky uh, later on this afternoon. But we do all actually have a large hail potential. So if the if the cap is able to break that kind of that warm air aloft and make these a little bit more surface break based, this definitely has a potential with these Cape values really extreme, a lot of instability in the atmosphere. Those could be significant hail producers. You're talking that golf ball size hail or greater extending all the way into North Texas, all the way down south into Waco, Texas. Uh, and then kind of the bullseye right along into Arkansas with that tornado threat and that very large hail threat of that golf ball size hail or potentially larger. But you can't roll out an isolated some hail threat of quarter size or bigger all the way down south into uh, San Antonio. 
but extending all the way into portions of Western Kentucky. So you definitely can't roll out. Really, the time frame from this is really after about five o'clock uh, this afternoon, things are gonna be starting to get really active. So as we transition into Tuesday, it gets really a lot more active. We still have the heavier snows that are gonna be continuing to fall. In fact, they just really start to amplify. And I think this is when the blizzard warnings start to take an effect with very heavy snow i mean blinding snow winds are going to be cranking 40 50 upwards to 60 mile per hour wind gust at times that's why they've got the blizzard warnings in place uh into parts of the dakotas but very heavy snow into montana there's the significant cold front and then you have that massive dry line setup with all the dry conditions out into West Texas, again, another critical fire danger. So wildfires is gonna be an extremely high concern for several days out here in West Texas into uh, Western Oklahoma and West, uh, West uh, Kansas here. But there's the warm front. And as this continues to lift up, there's the warm sector. And then we have multiple disturbances that come across with that mid to upper level trough and that's going to be kicking off it's a pretty significant outbreak into portions of all the way into texas oklahoma into kansas that extends all the way into iowa and it could extend all the way into portions of wisconsin here so let's kind of break this down as far as the tornado threat because this is going to be a lot more sheer i think the cap is going to be able to break as we get into the afternoon hours so we could be looking at some fairly significant tornadoes and strong tornadoes into portions of oklahoma into kansas and it could actually extend all the way into portions of iowa here and then kind of fading across as it moves into Arkansas, as well as uh, Louisiana. So let's kind of break this down uh, for the tornado potential, the, the really the highest impact to see one of those EF2 type uh, tornadoes or larger, unfortunately, would be into portions of the Oklahoma City area, into the Kansas, uh, Missouri area, Omaha, Nebraska, getting into Tulsa, Oklahoma, as well as in Des Moines, Iowa. Those are going to be areas that are a little bit more susceptible with the atmosphere rotating more significantly with those higher tornado parameters. Definitely be on high alert in those areas. But still, look at the brown shaded area extending all the way down south into Houston, uh, Shreveport into Little Rock that goes all the way into portions of Wisconsin you can't roll out a tornado threat with this massive dry line setup but even as far south as San Antonio you're still under a marginal risk and extending all the way into the uh, pretty much the entire state of Illinois going into Wisconsin and this eventually shifts off uh, further off into the east into the overnight hours getting into portions of Kentucky here with that uh, tornado potential but you also have that very large hail potential as well and even a, 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 a more widespread numerous impact extending again day two another hatched risk for that large golf ball size hail or greater extending all the way down into far south as Austin Waco, Dallas, going into uh, Oklahoma, Oklahoma City area here. That extends all the way into Kansas, back into Omaha, and this extends all the way back into Des Moines. So all these areas will be under the gun for significant hail potential of that golf ball size hail or greater. But all these areas and those yellows and the brown here, extending all the way south into San Antonio, going all the way into Mem Memphis, uh, I'm sorry, uh, M Mississippi here, you still have that possibility of some of that pocket change hail or some of that quarter size hail or or larger in in those areas so you can't roll out that uh that severe weather threat in those areas but as we st extend into uh wednesday man it just continues to amplify on the back side there's the significant cold front back behind it we have extremely dry area in west texas trailing with all the heavier snows still into portions of the Intermountain West getting into Oregon, Idaho, but all the heavier blinding snow shifts off into Montana, back in the, back in uh, North Dakota here. So you're talking two days of very heavy snow. That's why you're gonna you know, accumulate a foot upwards to two feet and you even can't roll out some isolated spots even higher than two feet. Yes, I said two feet of snow into North Dakota, but man, look at the warm front as it shifts all the way into Wisconsin, into Michigan, to the south of there, that's where you're gonna be having a significant, a significant severe weather outbreak 
unfolding for the southeast into portions of the Ohio Valley. And here's the setup for Wednesday, April the 13th, with a huge area of an enhanced risk and even another hatched risk for uh, se severe weather with all three modes into Memphis, into St. Louis, back into Shreveport, into Little Rock, going into Jackson, Mississippi. This extends all the way into Indianapolis, into Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, those areas will be high alert for all three modes of severe weather as the atmosphere will be rotating fairly significant. All that larger hail and the damaging winds continue to push across. I think it more or less ends, say, in North Texas into the morning hours. Behind that cold front, very dry air, but all the warm sector will be pushing off into uh, Louisiana, into Mississippi, going into western parts of uh, Tennessee, western Kentucky. But now it extends into Illinois, into Indiana, but then it could extend even as far, far north as Wisconsin, getting into uh, Michigan here. And even Green Bay. So you can see this is a huge swath of severe weather as this continues to shift and amplify as we get into your Wednesday time frame. But by Thursday, I think we make the transition finally because back behind it, we do have that significant cold front with all the drier air trailing behind it. That's why they've got that uh, numerous uh, wildfires, critical wildfire dangers in place really for three days. Uh, out ahead of it there's the dew points and then there's the surge into uh, that your your wednesday afternoon that's why the storm prediction center has highlighted all that severe weather extending as far north into wisconsin into uh, michigan here but the dew points higher than 55 i mean you get dew points in the low 60s that's plenty of moisture and the and the uh the, the lift up in the atmosphere that this uh upper to mid-level trough is going to be taking shape but back behind it there's the cold sector because by the time we get into thursday april the 14th you wake up with a good swath of 40 to 50 percent of the country below freezing temperatures with all these areas in blue are going to be below freezing extending all the way into uh, new mexico by then and to the texas panhandle all the areas out west intermountain west and the upper midwest but there's the warm sector so i do feel by thursday i think the cold air is going to be fast enough where it finally intrudes into the warm sector and it's going to be wiping out the severe threat so i'm not really expecting terribly too much severe weather by the time we get into thursday because i think a lot of the cold air will be just kind of drained in this uh in these areas as this continues to really shift off into the east it's gonna be pretty fast movers uh, but there's this there's the snow setup as we get into your Thursday afternoon as it kind of winds down. I mean, there will already let, be leaving an impact, but all the heavier snows will start to continue to crank and lift up further north. There's that 979 millibar low pressure. This will extend into Canada by then as the fishtail comma Q shapes uh, system will drain all the way down into extending into the southeast by then into the Ohio Valley. But yes, by Thursday, you're still going to get storms, but I think they're going to be a lot less severe or even just stronger storms by then as this continues to push off to the east. But the snow continues to fly <laughs> into portions of the Intermountain West, even on Thursday time frame. But even go going into Friday, the middle of the month of April, this, you can see how fast it's moving. So by Friday morning, it's pretty much off the coastline, off the East coastline, but we still have the rapid wraparound with a very windy week. I mean, it's gonna be an incredible windy week for a good chunk of the country as this snowstorm will try to wind down and kind of snow itself out over uh, North Dakota into Minnesota into Northern parts of Wisconsin then where you just got more snow gonna be flying into idaho as well as portions of wyoming and montana but there's the heavier snows i mean look at this this is in a pretty incredible picture for your april standards for snowfall with all the heavier snows out here in the intermountain west you can't roll out even more snow even along the coastline here into washington and oregon and northern california heavier snows for the sierra nevada but those snows just extend into nevada into idaho a good chunk of montana into especially as we get into Wyoming and then really cranking as we get into North Dakota with those one to two and even upwards to over two feet. Look at that 31 inches there. And this is the blend. I mean, this is the blend of the models. So yeah, you can't roll out 
some isolated spots of 30 inches of snow into Nebraska. So keep your snowblower handy because you're definitely going to need it in a big way as this very blinding and heavy snow as huge impacts are going to be on the table with that heavier snow for portions of the northern states. But as it gets off into the East Coast, it, it, again, you get all, you, you're going to remain in the warm sector. And by the time it shifts off into portions of Wisconsin, it's going to be shifting off into Canada by then. It kind of just ring itself out. So there's not going to be any little bit more, even more moisture to contend with as this low pressure system of that 979 low pressure system will continue to shift up into uh, portions of Canada by then. But here's your rain prospects over the next week. So we still have that you know, impressive atmospheric river taking shape into Washington and Oregon and Northern California. But there's the dry, there's the dry sector along the, along the Southwest and West Texas. You can see where this uh, dry line really starts to take shape. So it's bone dry in the central part of the US. But once you get to the east of that dry line, that's when things explode essentially really from say central Texas, but it, it it's going to be really amplifying as you get into portions of the southeast and the portions of the Ohio Valley with multiple inches of rain. And a lot of this up here is going to be in the form of snow as that low pressure system will continue uh, to wind itself down. So you can definitely see it's really active over the next couple of days. So my plan is I'm going to be on live tonight around five o'clock with the threat uh, for severe weather uh, into Texas, into Oklahoma, as well as into Arkansas. Uh, for tonight and then i'll be back on live for tuesday and wednesday tracking this significant event to keep you as safe as possible so i appreciate you guys uh, watching i uh, do like this video definitely uh, stay tuned for updates and i appreciate uh, i pre appreciate you watching and uh, stay tuned for updates where i protect you before and after the storm